Financial freedom, enabling lifestyle freedom, utilizing the principles of compounding and leverage according to Robert Kiyosaki's cash flow quadrant. Welcome, Daryl Lufton here. I look forward to connecting with you and helping you achieve your goals and dreams. At the age of 16, I began my working career as a mechanic. After completing my apprenticeship, I realized that being an employee and trading my time for money was not for me. At the age of 22, I pivoted to an alternative medicine practitioner career with big dreams and goals. In 1998, I became very unhappy with the financial rewards that my clinic was producing, and I read Robert Kiyosaki's best-selling book, Cash Flow Quadrant. I realized that I was still really just trading my time for money in my practice, just like an employee, and that I did not have a real business. That is the business that will run for you whether you're there or not, which is one of the two main keys of financial success according to Robert's book, Cashflow Quadrant. In 2005, I completed a postgraduate diploma in management studies, the first half of a Masters of Business Administration degree, an MBA at Waikato University. For a long time now, I've been looking for the ideal low barrier to entry, high income generating real business online that is affordable and doable for the average person. Patience paid off and I believe I've found it. It's called on passive. Why on passive? On passive truly is a fully automated online business that runs for you whether you're present or not after you set it up. Obviously, if you do some sharing, the more you will get out of on passive. On passive provides a full suite of above market value, f some free and some paid digital solutions to individuals as well as small and large enterprises. Disruptive physical products are also in development. In addition, I love that our mission is to serve and uplift humanity and that we are the correction for the corruption. We are here to help improve people's lives for the better. Ash Mufara, the CEO of On Passive, is in my opinion a brilliant businessman, pioneer, visionary, philanthropist, humanitarian leader, inspirer, coach and friend. What Ash has done with On Passive has never been done before. It's a new paradigm shift of business creation, development and management. I believe that what Marty DiGamo said is true, that On Passive will be studied in business schools in the not too distant future as a revolutionary business model and on passive will be life support for many struggling businesses. Ash Mufara has group consciousness as many of our other leaders have, often saying we are our brother's keeper, which is a hallmark of high developed souls from the research that I have done. He certainly is a very different CEO, not really a CEO, more a friend, mentor, coach, aspirer and visionary leader. With On Passive, I now have complete faith that my future is financially secure and that I will leave a legacy for my family that I would never have been able to have left before On Passive. I would love to show you the reality of On Passive, the huge income opportunity for us all, the positive impact we are having, the full potential of this disruptive groundbreaking project, which is more than a company, more than a movement, it is a revolution to uplift humanity. Hopefully, we are live. Live. I know, and it's a bit bright. And let me see if I can turn that down a little bit. Let's. Uh, there you go. It's a little yeah. bit better. Uh, how is everyone? Hope you are all well. Today is Monday, the thirteenth of November, and here we are with a Monday fun day. I know we've been missing in action. Uh, for a few weeks, obviously, uh, we, like ages. I know it does seem like ages. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we've had uh, internet problems and we've also been away. And Jane is going to bring you up to date with uh, the goings on <laughs> uh, for when we are away. Uh, yeah, a bit like that, really. Uh, but let's bring you up to date um, with on passive. And I'll just talk a little bit about the weekend and then we'll get into the other bits as far as. On passive, obviously it's Monday. Normally we have a new website. I'm sure that will be coming very shortly. So look out for that as well. If you're on Marty's and Chris's live at 10 a.m. Eastern uh, today, you would have heard them uh, saying that they are thinking that something will be happening this week. Uh, I concur with that as well. Um, I'm pretty sure that we will be. As far as the payment processor is concerned, um, Seems like crypto is going through okay now. Um, 
obviously, as far as uh, credit cards is concerned, this has been done manual, as we said. But I'm sure we will hear from Ash Mufara this week and he will update us on what is happening and how it is all going forward. Uh, like I said on my live uh, Friday, I think it was, as far as your three months that you've paid for, for those that have paid for it already on O-Connect, running out uh, on December the 1st, don't worry about it, guys. I'm 99.999 recurring percent sure that our CEO will extend this. Uh, so don't even give it a second thought. All right. He knows that uh, there's been many of us that haven't been able to resell uh, O-Connect because of the payment problems. So I'm sure that is going to get extended. Um so that's that. That's that. Obviously, keep an eye on your OES. That's the place to be going, the pop up on your OES, even though there is updates in your um, O founders back office. Uh, the pop up has been there for a very long time. So don't worry about that. But obviously, the updates, uh, Marty's been posted some bits in there. For instance, if you have purchased O Connect and it hasn't been activated uh, for within the 24 hours, 48 hour period, uh, then have a look at the uh, video that he's done with the Google spreadsheet. Put your name on that and I'm sure that will get sorted for you. OK, uh, apart from that, not much else is going on. Obviously, this weekend, a uh, very special weekend as far as I'm concerned. Obviously, ex-military armistice day was on uh, Saturday. So for everybody who was served or serving uh, thank you for your service. Uh, very poignant day for me, obviously. And yesterday was uh, Remembrance <laughs> Sunday here in the UK. Uh, so uh, big thank you to all of those that served, including myself. Yes. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's move over to Jane. Jane's going to uh, tell you all about our travels with my parents with... Uh, a cruise company called Saga and where we went. So I'm going to hand it over to you, Jane. Aptly called Saga. Apps. It was a Saga. <laughs> Hi, everyone. It's nice to be back. I'm so sorry I've missed you for one reason or another. Internet, either we were away and I was looking after Red's mum, either or, we're back. And guess what? We're back safely. Yes. Um, first of all, I'd like to say... Um, Thank you for all your, um, so we started off on this lovely cruise and we had some really lovely comments. Some of you ladies out there send me some beautiful, beautiful comments about either what I'm wearing, where did I buy it, um, etc. Um, all was going well and I thank you for that. It was so lovely of you all. You're always so sweet to me and it was going so well. We even got to eat with the captain. We did. We were on the captain. We liked table. him that day. Yeah, we did like him that it, day. And uh, it, we had a wonderful, wonderful time. And I'll condense this bit. We no, uh, we were no, we were there for about fourteen days essentially. But on about day eight, they decided there was an incoming storm, and they were going to sort of try and race it. Really, he wanted to try and get ahead of it and shelter us in um, La Coruña. So which we is, missed out one of the nice. Ports. which is northern spain for yeah. those that don't know where it is yeah so we missed out gran canary which is one of the canary islands which was lovely down there um in hindsight it's a wonderful thing we should have probably stayed, stayed. down there <laughs> uh and we made a um head up to la Coruña for two days to shelter well when you say the word shelter you think why are we sheltering well there was a big storm coming it wasn't the storm that was over the uk um, it was a different storm called um, Storm Domingo. Domingo. And I don't like it when they give storms names because it always means it's a little bit more serious than it sounds. So we headed up and by the time we got to La Coruña, it was shut. They shut the doors on us and said, sorry, you can't come in. It's too rough. So our captain decided, and not on his own, not on his own with head office, etc., that we were just going to carry on back to Portsmouth, which is the UK. And that was Friday. Across the Bay Biscay, wasn't it? Yeah. So any of you, if you know your geography, people like um, Brian Quirk, etc., will understand that anyone from the UK will understand the Bay of Biscay is notorious for being a little bit choppy, very rarely get a smooth one. But, but you know, these are cruise ships, everyone, ferries manage. It's just, it's just got a reputation. That's fine. No bother. It wasn't going to be anything worse than what we'd had on the way down. We were Quote. told. <laughs> Quote. 
So I was like, that's fine. Then when I walked into our bedroom, everything was tied down to within an inch of its life. And I thought, that doesn't seem correct because on the way down, nothing was. So I, I actually said to her, I don't understand that. I don't understand why they've tied everything down. Anyway, moving forward, Friday, we had a fairly rough day. Things yeah. were starting to close down. Service that you couldn't go on deck 12, you couldn't go on deck 11. The restaurant on deck 11 was shut. Um, and we, it, things was just starting to like, they were cutting things out, like the entertainment was on a lower floor, things like that. And anyway, Saturday morning came. And well, we had a very rough Friday we night. We had a quite a rough Friday night, didn't we? And Saturday morning came and about sort of half 10 ish it started to really the boat started to pitch a bit and we were sat having a coffee with red's dad and behind us in the restaurant all the plates landed on we lurched and all the plates landed on the floor and we were like whoa hang on a minute that's not good and everybody sort of didn't laugh about it but it was a little bit like this isn't great by which time we were entering the bay of biscay uh many questions why haven't we pulled in why haven't we gone to a port why didn't we go to lisbon why didn't we go to santander why didn't we defer why didn't we defer we didn't really get any answers it just seemed like we were hell bent on getting back to the uk um so me and my thing was a free laundrette service on the ship <laughs> so Winning. we decided i know Let's while we can't do anything else, let's go to the laundry and, and do all the washing and do all the laundry. So we put it in. We went down for a coffee with Red's dad, and of course it started to get a bit rough. So I said to, to Red, "Look, I'm going to go to the laundry and get my washing out because I think this might be the last chance today I can do this." So I did that, and then Red went to our room, but then went was going to go and check on his mum and dad because uh, it was starting to get a little bit rough, and. At 12.35, approximately, the captain came over the tannoy, um, didn't introduce, didn't say anything, just shouted at us, cease movement, um, please grab, oh, didn't even say please, actually, cease movement, grab anything you can, if you or, can, or lie down. And I, I was in the laundrette and I thought, I, just, I thought, holy crap, what does that mean? And... There was a chap in a room doing a, a lovely little guy doing some cleaning on the other side and shouted to me, sit down, mom, sit down. So I sat on the, I sat down, he went, no, on the floor. So I sat on the floor and by this time I was thinking, this isn't good. So Red came and then Red came, I got myself up because what happened was a boat had sort of lurched, hadn't it? It like lurched, to the, everyone says the left, but in, to, in if I'm honest, my brain didn't really equate that. All I know is there was a big bang. All the water started coming out of the washing machines. It was chaotic. So Red came racing down the corridor. To make, to, sure to make was... are you okay? Are you okay? And I said, I think so. But when I stood up, my legs had gone and I was all jellyfied because I was frightened. And he said, right, you're coming with me. And we went down to check on his father. We went on to the library on deck seven. And they said, no, everybody out the library because someone had been thrown across the floor and there was blood and whatever. So we all went down to deck five. But in the meantime, Red goes running back up to make sure his father's in his room. and does that. So there we stayed on deck five for how, how many hours? Oh, a, a long time. Because um, no, no. It, everyone was then confined to their cabins. Yeah, uh, wherever you all were. All services were yeah, suspended. suspended. And obviously, uh, Saga specialised, obviously, in an aged aged mm. uh, clientele yeah. um, there was about 980 uh, passengers on board and uh, the average age was about uh, 76 so it really was uh, people who were very uh, unsteady on their feet anyway yeah. uh, mm -hmm. without being in we the, were in, more the yeah, uh, and we were definitely younger were the younger able-bodied but we went on there didn't we for yeah, but hours we, and hours well, and hours we went but... we went to five because uh, they also specialize in uh, singles so that's whether people have lost partners but they want a nice safe environment to be in which is absolutely fantastic actually by the way yeah. how, how saga do it but obviously if you're a woman uh you don't want to be left in a you cabin in the middle own. of a storm because you don't want to be on your own because you you're scared enough as it is mm. without being in a cabin on your own yeah. so there was a big group uh 
of girls that yep, Jane, sort of Jane had met uh, and had drinks with previously. So we were basically... Well, hung, I was hung. I was sort of... They begged us to stay with them. Please don't, you know, so we stayed in a corner. But in the meantime, everybody was getting... Th honestly, everybody... The boat was rolling at this point and everything that was up there fell off and then it had come back round and everything up there here fell off. So I we were trying to hold these down. But Red, in the meantime, was going over and helping the crew pick up people, pick up... Things, glasses were crashing, plates were smashing everywhere. The coffee machine got ripped off the wall. The drum kit on the stage. Not just all over there. Was, was just kept rolling one way and rolling the other way. And then this continued and continued. And then a big glass lamp smashed in front of us. And I, I then at this point said, this is ridiculous. So I took some photos and read, took, took a videos. little video because I said, this is absurd. And, and people were, Screaming, panicking. They they, like they really were. Flapping, they were they? very frightened. The crew were panicking, but the crew were amazing. They just never stopped and picking, all, up, picking up people. And also, you know. when when we had the big announcements uh, to cease movement, uh, the captain then put us in the thing called heave to, which mm. is basically a safety manoeuvre uh, that you are into wind or into into the so you, your nose is into the storm and he held this position for 18 hours so we were literally not going anywhere just holding yeah. our position yeah. in the middle of this damn storm and we were getting tossed around all over the yeah. place and that started at about um really when it started getting bad at about 10 a.m on the saturday mm. and it wasn't till around about 5 a.m on the sunday morning that we were uh, able to start moving again. And even when we started moving, it was pretty frightening. Yeah. Uh, so We didn't hear from the captain. We, did, we didn't hear we from him much at all. I think he made one announcement saying, everybody, please stay where you are. Um, and you must please understand the boat is safe at all times. And I can yeah. honestly tell you, nobody felt safe. felt safe. It was horrific. And then we there were people the, the people that had stayed in their rooms were getting injured because they were in their rooms and they were getting Get thrown, around. thrown around and then of course then they were doing this um code alpha over which the is, channel which all the time stretches. which is stretches so they were going code alpha to deck nine code alpha to deck seven or cabins or wherever cabins and it it was like it was just i don't want to say a war zone because i don't want to take away from a war zone it was just pandemonium you know it was crack crazy everybody was i was trying to stay calm red was trying to stay calm uh, red's dad asked for a big whiskey <laughs> he had a massive one as well it's <laughs> like uh is there any chance i can get a whiskey and you know it was a little bit like that and we did try and find a little bit there was i was looking after one particular lady called rita um who had ordered uh, i mean the crew carried on serving if you could have a drink but it was plastic cups because everything was broken they were carrying and every time she ordered a rosé the boat tipped and she threw it all over me <laughs> I mean, so to... we had tried to have it i was kept saying to her can you just stop ordering drinks because i was trying to like make light of the situation for her but it was oh, pretty it... horrible i mean to cut a long story short we managed obviously we got back safely to portsmouth uh but before we even docked at port, the company mm. had put wow. out a press release to one of the online new hey. news agencies. And this is really what got the passengers backs up was because yeah. it was it was damped down from the severity. Uh, it said stuff like minor injuries. Well, over, I can tell you now, well over 100 passengers were injured. There was broken hips, uh, broken femurs. They, uh, arms. The, the medical centre was swamped. They had to overspill that into the half of the main dining room to make a makeshift uh, first aid centre. So to call it minor injuries uh, really started uh, winding up a lot of the passengers. And so subsequently, I set up a started getting people's names and addresses together to make a group because I thought there's no way they're going to get away with this. And obviously, when we came back, um, we start. We then started contacting the media ourselves mm. because obviously uh, they needed to know. Really. They needed to know the the true side of what exactly happened. That the, the bottom line is, we shouldn't have been taken into the storm. They knew it was coming. 
two and a half days prior to us actually getting there. And it just stank of corporate greed of wanting to get the ship back, back. to Portsmouth mm -hmm. because it was going out yeah. on a one month Caribbean cruise. Yeah. Uh, so they were also saying over the oh he said he explained the next morning that the safety system had kicked in and veered the boat to the left well which we thought was all well rubbish. a lot every a lot of people take that on board they go yeah yeah okay but a lot of the guys and there were some marine engineers on there were going no not that's not true no safety um, system throws a boat to the left anyway it turns out everyone there's two propulsion systems and they're very technical because it's quite a new boat ship and it turns out that it's coming out in the media now that one of the propulsions failed. failed so therefore in what had happened i think it, i think potentially because the sea was so rough the waves were 50 foot high yeah we had 14.75 meter waves hey, and uh, hey. the spanish maritime hey. coast guard uh, had released as well that uh that it's the biggest storm to hit that area where we were obviously for yeah. 27 years and they manage they monitor it by the boys that are out at sea and it's not just a freak wave this is over a 30 minute period so to be able to say that it's the worst storm in 27 years and it had uh waves in excess of 50 feet uh you know and we were in the middle of it so yeah. But to so, be, so we got back all safe. But to be fair, once it all hit the media and people started releasing hey, pictures, videos, come here. Uh, come here. doing interviews, as you well saw, uh, I did a few. And the company released on Friday that they are doing the right thing as far as refunds are concerned. Yeah. So uh, we're very thankful of that. And I will say one thing, though, about Saga. Uh, it is at the top end of the uh, expensive cruises. Range, yeah. And I mean, luckily, as you well know, we were chaperoning my parents who paid for us to go with them, which was lovely. Uh, so, you know, but what they do, they do very, very mm. well. No, it was, uh, it was I mean, brilliant. The, the cruise ships could take, uh, the, it's, it was only built in 2019, so not very old at all. Uh, it, it can actually take, up to 1600 passengers but they never go over a thousand so there's always plenty of space there's no queuing uh you get treated literally mm. like royalty it yeah. is absolutely amazing five star and the food is second to none and that's coming from a chef uh it really is top I had lobster yeah twice. lobster tail twice twice uh fillet steaks it, so whatever you whatever food. you want yeah it was it was lovely wasn't it yeah it was very good so i I would recommend uh, Saga <laughs> Cruises, funnily enough, because of what they do, because uh, yeah. they are very, very good. Yeah, uh, that's for sure. And it is just a shame that uh, bad choices were made. Mm. Uh, they made some bad decisions, really. In, in fact, I'll go as far as to say reckless yeah. decisions were made. Yeah, uh, that they were certainly putting safety over uh, timelines. I think is the nicest and it's, way. And it's a shame, it. isn't it, for like Reds, like Reds. Red's dad is pretty stoic and he was sort of going, I knew the ship wasn't going to sink. You but know, I, as, you that, know, but... as you well know, my mum's not very well at all. She's no. just about wheelchair bound. She's on oxygen yeah. and she's very frail. So this is, that was probably well, the last. We asked her, didn't we? Would you go again? No. Said, no, categorically no. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, I think her cruising days could be over, which is sad, really, because it was a bit of a sad end. Yeah, because it's not the it's not all the memories that we wanted to make, no. which is all part and parcel of going away with my folks, is to, no. you know, make memories. That's what it's all about, isn't it? Making memories. Mm. Uh, so anyway, we thought, Here we, are. we thought, I know it's Monday fun day, and I, <laughs> I know, know it's meant to be fun. I did say to Red, let me explain what happened, because I've got so many people have messaged me, and voicemails some lovely voicemails and some people have rang me and, and you know i can't answer them all to be honest and it, it it's only fair that <clears throat> as we always bear everything on a monday not literally no no bearing so um, anyway yeah. um we uh we're back now uh back to normal I think I've, looking at this i think i've aged yeah, back Can to I normal sue saga for that <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I feel so like I've aged. Obviously, I will be back to my normal routine as far as uh, daily updates are concerned. And Wednesday, obviously, is 360. Uh, like I said, 
I'm expecting to hear from Ash this week and we are expecting to get some updates of where we are uh, as far as the payment system uh, is concerned. Uh, yes, Chris. I knew, I, well, I, well, there you are. <laughs> who have you been? I want to know, Chris, who have you been taking the mickey out of while I've not been here? You must have chosen someone, surely. I don't know, but don't call him Shirley. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, I messaged Chris actually on the Saturday morning because I couldn't. We were on deck eleven, and it was very rocky up there. And uh, oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I feel her pain. Yeah. And um, we were on deck eleven, and I was like, I can't step here. It's just too much for me. This was about half past three in the morning. I came downstairs, and there was like a little, uh, like a skeleton staff in the living, what they called the living room. There were a lot of people sleeping on the floor because obviously a lot of people didn't want to go back to cabins. And this lovely chap said, do you want a coffee? And I said, I'll have a coffee. And I was sat having a coffee. And, of course, it's half past three in the morning. And I thought, I was all sort of hyped up. And I thought, God, who can I message? Do I message Chris? <laughs> and he said, I'd have loved that. I'd have been on my surfboard out. And I was like, no, you wouldn't. <laughs> it, was, it was like. <laughs> so I did message Chris. And he did respond straight away, which was lovely of you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, it was. Anyway, uh, yeah, so uh, look out in the back office, guys, for any updates. Obviously, uh, if you are one of the people that has paid for O-Connected, but it's not showing in your ecosystem, go to your O-Founders and that will be there. If you're an affiliate and not a founder and you have activated, but it's not showing, uh, then contact the support network that is there. Can I just say ecosystem. something to Winston Marquardt? It's a great name. He says, the more you do for people, the less they appreciate it. Do you know what, Winston? It doesn't matter. Just be your true self. You carry on being your true self. Don't measure your giving by how someone responds to it because you just would stop. Yeah, you so, would. So <clears throat> not everybody feels and thinks like you. So don't, don't measure that. You just be your true self. Yeah, be yourself. Yeah. And if you want to keep giving, then give. And if some people don't want to respond or yeah, like don't I, want to reciprocate and don't like, I, like I said on Wednesday uh with Ash that um obviously with Saga everything's included or tips or gratuities yeah. everything's all included hey. but we we took uh some cash with us because yeah uh we wanted to uh, give our appreciation to the <laughs> people that were serving us and the people behind the bar and cabins etc and I have to say, we tipped every single day, oh, every and, day. It, and it felt great. Yeah, every day. Not a lot, not a lot, only like five bucks here, ten bucks there, uh, whatever it may be. So in the scheme of things, mm. not a lot of money. My dad mm. thought I was absolutely stupid. Mm. He said, why are you doing it? It's included. I said, because you why should not? look at their faces when mm. we tip them. Why not? And they... They were very, very good to us, weren't they? Yeah, they and it made really us sweet. feel, and it made us feel good as well. And I, my, um, our cabin lad um, was called Romeo. Let's Where say. are they? Where? <laughs> so, Romeo. Uh, so I, we were laughing. At, <laughs> he was lovely, bless him. But when I saw him, <clears throat> I asked him, was he okay? And he said, No, mom, I'm frightened. Yeah, you know things are going so sideways I, I, when I, the the staff are scared. Yeah, so I gave him a big hug. <laughs> after oh, i don't even know if that's allowed in his you know i don't know what you know i think they were from the philippines but i thought i don't know if that's allowed if i just overstepped a mark there but i think he was pretty grateful yeah he was because <laughs> he was he was like i'm frightened and i thought god and he was only a young lad and it was it was quite sad really but we would go back with saga for sure Oh yeah, we you know, listen. When, the chances of that happening to us again, I, I, I like, like to zero. think are pretty nil. So, so when, I would go back again. When the on passive back. apples start, then that is certainly something they that have we would started. Like to, They're yes. just in a holding tank. I know you know what I mean. Uh, okay, then we're going to say a few hellos to people. Then we're going to slide off. Uh, back around tomorrow, normal time for me, which will be eleven uh, oh. Eastern. Uh, so that's going to be four PM for the UK. So we'll start off with all. I've been looking for something like this for a long, long time. The journey to now has been a roller coaster ride, but it taught me invaluable lessons, skills, and insights. After thousands of hours of research and experience, and investing thousands of dollars in testing many opportunities, both online and offline, I can say that I know what to look for and what to avoid. On Passive has been getting better and better all the time, and helping millions of people 
in over 150 countries around the planet. Most importantly, Unpassive is here to help us all succeed, and it is here to stay. Our mission is to serve and uplift humanity. We are the correction for the corruption. On Passive is a real company with a real CEO, with real staff, real products, which are all above market value. Many have never been seen before. We have real partners, real customers, real sales, real commissions, and real help to unlimited people around the world. On Passive will help you save money, save time, and be more efficient and effective. You get more and pay less with On Passive. On Passive is free to try and we have many free products that will be free forever. If it doesn't save you time and stress, then don't use it, but I'm sure that it will. You have nothing to lose and a lot to gain. If you like what you saw in this video, please subscribe to my channel, like the video and leave a comment. Click the link in the description below to join On Passive free and take the tour and get in touch with me if you have any questions. If you would like to be an on passive affiliate reseller and get free traffic from the company with our efforts that create a traffic tank for the traffic rotator with my support, click become an affiliate at the top of your on passive ecosystem, read and sign the NDA. There's a video explanation of how to do this in the description below. Contact me with any questions you may have and I will reply immediately. My email is daryl at omail.ai, D-A-R-R-Y-L at O-M-A-I-L dot A-I. Thank you for watching. See you again soon. Love, peace and harmony for us all.